Good morning, brothers and sisters. We've got a lot to celebrate today. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and father figures out there. Also, happy day of all true things, the 58th day of all true things. We've got so much to celebrate. God is really blessing us and our community at this time, and we're so excited to start this week off with you. I want to invite you to open up your heart, put aside the other things that are in your mind and clouding your mind, and be present this morning so that your heavenly parent can speak to you. And let's kick off this amazing national family service with our opening song. For our opening song today, let's welcome the Family Church of San Diego band, All the Above, singing the song, The Greatest of Our God.
Thank you for that great song, All the Above. Now I'd like to invite Tomomi Fukuda, CARP leader for Clifton, New Jersey, for our opening prayer. Please join me in prayer. Most beloved parents and true parents, we are so grateful that we can gather together as one big family centered upon your heavenly parents. We like to celebrate this day as the 58th, the day of all true things, for you create this beautiful universe to experience joy together with us. But also, we are facing fears, struggles, and confusion in this world. It reminds us that we stand with your love, your word, and to pray for our brothers and sisters, and to support and forgive our one another to show the light to the world. Thank you, our true parents, for your continuous love for us to live on and purify ourselves so that we are able to become true sons and daughters. We start to recognize that living with true parents is a precious and beautiful gift for us. Please let us open our hearts today to receive your guidance and your mercy and to be able to convey true love and embody your message as your children to create the world together with our brothers and sisters. I humbly report in my name, Tomomi Fukuda, daughter of Hidetoshi Sunja Fukuda, West Central Family, Emenaju. Good morning and welcome to the National Family Service. Our international community was founded by Father and Mother Moon, whom we call our true parents. True parents have taken up the mission bestowed upon them by Jesus Christ to help us all reconnect and fortify our relationship with God through a deeper understanding called the Divine Principle and by receiving the Holy Marriage Blessing. To learn more about our community, just type hashtag connect on the Facebook chat or sign the guestbook on nationalfamilyservice.org. On our website, you'll find all the links you'll need for tithing, community, meetups, kid resources, and more. We'd love to hear your ideas and feedback at any time. Just hit the send a message button on our Facebook page to chat with one of our online ushers. Thanks for joining us today. We can't wait to get connected with you. Now I'd like to invite you to enjoy some Godable this morning, featuring an excerpt from the Chun Sung Gyeong, which is a compilation of Father and Mother Moon's words. The family is the center of education. In it, you pass the test that qualifies you to enter the kingdom in the other world. Who is the head of the family? The head is the one that most loves the whole family. Who is the head of this world? If you view the heavenly nation as one huge family, the one who most loves the people on earth is the head. Each race may think they are the best, but that is not the case. Although both the east and the west exist, each thinks it is best. Yet neither can exist without the other. The two are bound in a partner relationship. I thank you for that great Godable reminding us that, you know, we are, we are all one. We're in a relationship and partnership, and we have to really think from the highest perspective to be able to see what God needs us to see. Brothers and sisters, today there's so much going on, so many great things to talk about. Um, I saw a funny comment on the chat that says, uh, happy day of all true dads. I like that. Very creative. <laughs> and at this time, we want to welcome two of our father figures for our movement here in America, uh, Dr. ki Hoon Kim, the International Vice President of Family Federation. And we also want to welcome the president here in the USA, Reverend Damian Dunkley. We have a lot to celebrate, and our team actually uh, prepared a, a little card for both of you. I know we're going to celebrate Day of All True Things, um, but we prepared. Your families helped us to create this. Dr. Kim, your daughter, sent us this beautiful photo of you, and Reverend <laughs> Dunkley, your oh. wife, sent us this, this gem of a photo. <laughs> and we just wanted to wish <laughs> both of you a happy Father's Day. Thank you so much for you know, being such important mentors and role models for this nation, standing in these roles. We love you and we're very grateful for you. So thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Good morning, uh, Dr. Thank you. Kim. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Yes. And happy 58th anniversary. 
stay over all true things to your yeah. family, to all our family members throughout the nation, throughout the world. <laughs> you see beautiful cakes here? Beautiful. <laughs> So do you, so do you have an you have a knife? <laughs> you have a knife ready, right? Okay, so you're going to conduct the ceremony, but we're all going to be with you. The whole nation in spirit is with you. So we'll follow so, you. So yeah, I have two candles, representative of our true father and true mother and all brothers and sisters, all father and mother's figures and let us celebrate the 58th anniversary. Uh, for the sake of day of all true things. All right. Ana, do, say. <laughs> you want to read this song? Yeah, roll tape. Cake. Happy 58th <laughs> day of all true things to you. Happy day of things to you. Happy day of all things to you. <laughs> Happy 58th day of all true things to true parents, to God, and to the whole world. Adieu. 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 All right. It's cut. It's blown. Mrs. Kim, do you have any word? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Happy, Father's, Happy Day. Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, please also enjoy the cake for everybody. All right. <laughs> I think that's a green tea on there. Green tea. Oh, yes. Right, 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 right. What do you call it? Thanks, honey. Okay, so now while our wives go to watch on the big screen, we stay here. Dr. Kim. What is on your heart to share with the world this morning? You know, I got a phone call uh, two days ago from True Mother, and I share with the uh, brothers and sisters and several regional uh, leaders. And I share with you uh, yesterday uh, about the uh, True Mother's. Uh, really concerned about the, you know, America today. Uh, so true mother uh, really want the American family members be a... Uh, That's good, right there. That's okay. Maybe you have your camera on a sandbag. I know it's one of those ones, right? There yeah. you go. Okay. And true mother really want to you know, America and American family members take it, you know, leadership's role uh, for the sake of America's today and around the world. It is very important because, you know, America as a world leadership country was leading a world situation and all kinds of problems around the world, always, you know, America stood up for the sake of worldwide and for the sake of God-centered. And today we are facing with social unrest and coronavirus pandemic situation. This is really bothering all of us, not only one family or just one community or one group. This is, we have to bring all kinds of issues and all kinds of problems. No one can really resolve this situation very well. True Mother always asking us, and now America, as you are chosen people and God chose this nation, America, and chosen American family members, especially, you know, all blessed central family officiated by and blessed by, you know, our dear true parents. We must stand up 
we do what? What is our stronghold? None other than true parent way of life. You know, always a true father, true mother, emphasizing about the true love is our fundamental core value and essence. Without this, we cannot resolve anything. With this, we can resolve every problems around myself, my family, my community, my nation, my world. So best way, we must come back to true parents and through true parents, we must come back to America. And America, you have role, not only yourself, for the sake of the world. Korea, reunification, North and South Korea. And this is today's uh, a lot of uh, issues around. And America must stand up for the sake of reunification, North and South Korea. Even today, Chicago Tribune Sunday, a newspaper article about the meeting with Trump between Kim Jong-un and how they met two years ago and how they fell down today. So we the head of a state, they meet, they talk, still they are struggling more than ever. We have intense situation, North and South Korea. As you, we all heard, True Mother's special prayer condition. Uh, let us come together and support the True Mother's uh, special prayer condition and let us uh, join in and let us uh, support uh, this uh, reunification effort for the sake of heavenly parents and for the sake of true parents, for the sake of heavenly parents, holy community. So this is a reason True Mother called to say hello, how was everybody doing under the, these circumstances? And True Mother is very praying, but one thing very clear, problems always occurred when we focus our own self, on church, on community, on nation, think about America, last few years, America is great. Yes, how can we make America great nation in the world? Without God, without the true parents, it cannot, impossible. So this is a, a true mother's uh, concern and I share with uh, many other uh, leaderships around uh, thank you, uh, Damian, your leaderships, uh, and let us come and unite with the true power and spirit. Let us overcome, you know, our difficulties today together. Yes. Together we come, we can overcome this uh, difficult time of era. Mm -hmm. So once again, brothers and sisters, Reverend Dunkley, thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim. Thank you so much. And again, any chance you get, I know you'll continue to share our blessed family's love to True Mother. Uh, you know, so yesterday when I heard this news from you, I was thinking about the mother's mind. You know, there's so many things in the world right now, like uh, so many problems, and there are real problems. But mothers are thinking about North and South Korea and the unity of the, the importance of this land to be united. And as I was reflecting on it, Dr. Kim, I was thinking, you know, most people might think about uh, in North and South Korea, centering on the North or centering on the South, how will we unite? And then once we unite, what will that be? But more than unification of the peninsula, I feel mother's mind and heart is already thinking about what she will do after unification. Yes. So it's like it's a means to an end. It's not the conclusion. 
It's like it, it must absolutely happen in order for God to fulfill all the work that God wants to do on the global and cosmic stage. And so what, you know, I'm imagining what would mother do with Korea under heavenly parent and true parent sovereignty? How could we influence the world ongoing? And then, as you mentioned about America's responsibility, of course, we know Japan and America have a unique responsibility internally and externally. And so what can we do in our own nation? So when we're divided, clearly you can see this is a time when the world needs America. I'm sure more than ever, the world needs America now. That's why we're seeing evil attack internally and always evil attacks through our weak points. It's true we have those weak points. And yet, what can we do, especially as unificationists, where do we stand no matter what together? So we, we must grow and reflect internally and be ready to serve the world and specifically mothers really looking for us to help uh, at every level of society, politically, religiously, socially, to support. If we can support Korea, most people don't understand why that's important. Uh, even it's difficult to relate, right? However, like you said, it's in the news. People know about North Korea more than they know about communism now. And so we can imagine what God could do just on the condition of our unity. As members, we might not know the vast spiritual geopolitical strategy of God. We might not understand. But if we do understand unity, and if we do understand overcoming my limitation and you know, repenting from my weakness, but committed to unity, then God can work through that condition to bring the miracle and show me, right? So thank you, Dr. Kim, for your guidance. And this time, as you thank know, you. we are, you know, reading uh, The Mother of Peace. Uh, I think among some people, there's a competition. How many, how, how many times did you read it? You know, I took my first reading very slowly. I didn't get my book until just a few days before Chosen. I have some others that I'm giving away. But I read a little bit every day through the 21 day and concluded at the end of the 21 day. And I shared before with many of you my experience with it. Um, it's like, you know, I had many experiences, somehow you could say, mystically or spiritually or emotionally, artistically, with True Mother before I met True Mother, before my position changed, even I was having a very deep kind of personal experience with God because of True Mother and her unique position. And I had, I had many opportunities to hear her or be kind of close in the room to hear her and see her. But just to read this book, uh, this, is, this can bring you closer than sitting at the table with Mother. Because you're not looking at mother. In my experience, I'm not looking at mother with this book. I'm not studying her past. I feel like I'm looking through her eyes. I feel like I'm looking at her first steps from her footsteps from the first person perspective. Um, you know, father has an incredibly inspiring way of speaking, right? He's very charismatic. He's very engaging. He's shocking. He's hot. He's cold. He's windy. He's calm. He's extremely entertaining. Mother speaks smoothly, steadily, with a lot of space in between the words. And I started to reflect, you know, a couple of years ago that mother's speaking style is actually the kind of speaking style that you want from a parent when they're reading you a bedtime story. And those bedtime stories are usually stories of mor moral stories, right? They're teaching the children what to dream about so the next day they can grow and internally. And mother's words are so often like that. They're short, they're anecdotal, they're telling a story. And this is a collection of mother's stories starting when she's very young from her earliest memories and her earliest walk with God. I know I'm speaking and preaching to the choir for many of you who have, but I want to announce today that it's up on Amazon. And I want to show you exactly 
where to get it and what we're now doing with this story because it transformed me again. Uh, each page I felt tears of God and of true parents. And I feel closer to God because of mother's eyes. Guess who else I feel closer to because of mother's eyes? I feel closer even to true father because of mother's eyes. And I felt like she's holding my hand and letting me look through her eyes and look through her point of view throughout the course of her life. I'm really excited about, you know, when's the next one coming, you know? Because I know mother has so many more stories to share. But in the meantime, I'm going to share my screen with you and show you where to go to get the book. You can go to Amazon.com. And when you go to Amazon, you can type in, guess what? The Mother of Peace. Now, what will you see when you search for The Mother of Peace? You'll, search, you'll, you'll find many books related to that title. Now, you see the first one here? This is actually not where I want you to go. One of our precious members is so excited about the book, they already bought a few extra copies, and on January 1st, they, they posted their own copy. They only had the two copies. There's only one available, and it's more expensive than the correct price. Actually... I don't think it's really a good idea. This is kind of an announcement, brothers and sisters. I don't think it's really a good idea for all of us to go buying books and then selling True Parents books on our own page on Amazon. I think it's better we go through one page. And I'll show you why. So the first thing you see here is, is, is this book. But if you go down just a few more, this one has just been posted. And I'm sure this will show up on the top of your search page very soon. Let's go into here. Here you have both paperback and a Kindle version available. The paperback is ready for pre-order, and I believe in two days it's going to be shippable. It's a number one new release. That just means it's new release in Christian ecumenism. Uh, but the Kindle format is already available right now. And so you can purchase as many as you want of each of these formats has a wonderful description here. And you can also look inside the book here, just like any book on Amazon, I know. And I'm there's a follow button here. So I'm already following this author. And then there's other sponsored content. I wanna show you this, this is the product details. So most of this is, you know, uh, maybe not interesting to you. This is the publisher. This is our organization on, uh, led right now by Tom McDivitt, the Washington Times Global Media Group. And this was published to Amazon June 21st. And look at this. Right now it has a rank, an Amazon bestseller rank. In three categories right now, you can see biographies of of memoirs of women. Let me zoom in a bit. Also, you can, it's 474 in that category. It's 1,494 in women's biographies. And it's number 63 in women's spirituality. So right now we are working with a marketing team that's helping us to really corner certain niche markets of where this book belongs. As if you were going into the bookstore, where would you go to find it? You can find out more. Mother has her own page now on Amazon. You can find out more about the author. Now, this is what I especially want you to see. Customer reviews. Currently, there's no reviews because even if some of you have submitted a review, it, Amazon will take one or two days to clear that review to make sure it's not spam, to make sure it's not inappropriate. I already wrote my review, so if I hit this button, you will see Already, I gave it a five stars. This is my review that's pending right now. This is my title. And this is my copy, just personally from me. You know, and personally, I wanted to write it in a way that, yes, I'm very clear about who she is, but I want the world to understand exactly what I'm saying when they see my review. So that will be posted within the next couple of days as soon as Amazon realizes I'm a regular person. 
and you can buy with Kindle or you can buy paperback. If you buy paperback, it will register. You can purchase it as a pre-order and choose your shipping, etc. If you buy Kindle, I want to show you how this works. I hope you guys don't mind doing this. Um, if, if you want to buy now, you have to say where it's going and you can also give it as a gift to buy for others. Here, you see that? How many? I might choose one. I might hit buy for others. And then what it's going to do is take me to a page where I can enter in somebody's email address. So my friend at gmail.com, for example, from me, you know, and then I can write a note. This book will change your life. Something, whatever I want to say. And when do I want it to deliver? I can choose a date. And then they will get a link to their email address to, to download a pre-purchased book, Kindle version of True Mother's Kindle. So you can send Kindle versions to other people. And you can, of course, send print versions either directly from Amazon or to your home, ship a few to your house, maybe write a few love letters of your own. You know, you can write on the first page, you know, to so-and-so, you know and sign it and send to your tribe, to your family members. And I encourage you to be confident that God is working through this, okay? I'm sure everybody that's already read it, you know. But for those of you that have to act on faith, go ahead, act on faith. You've been trained your whole life to do so. So with that, I really want to thank you, Dr. Kim, uh, for your leadership and your words of guidance today based on True Mother's uh, recent words to America. America is leading. Do you remember the title of Famicom? America leading. Mother really is looking for us to lead the world. And I know that many of us still think that there's local stories that are important, right? We have many dramatic stories. I know, believe me, I know Dr. Kim knows very well. And of course, we have to be responsible how we treat one another in our family, how we treat one another in our communities, how we take care of our buildings and all the precious assets that true parents gave to us. But remember, America has more than any other country in the world. We have more freedom. We have more resources. We have more holy grounds. We have more, you know, blessed and high spirit. We have everything we need if we spend too many minutes or too many hours looking at ourselves. There's time to look at ourselves in the mirror and reflect. But think of it. In the day of 24 hours, you must look at the mirror in the morning, right, Dr. Kim? To check your hair, to brush your teeth, to wash your face. You must check in with your family and ask, how are you doing and what can we do today? But at the end of the day, there's many hours that we spend not in front of the mirror. There's many hours in the day that we spend not in front of the mirror looking at ourselves. We have to look at one another and finally go out. How are we loving our neighborhood? How are we loving our community? And as a community, as a unification community, we must first be thinking, what are we doing to heal this country such that we can live for the sake of the world? Because the world is watching, the world is waiting, and the world is longing for America to lead. Not only the world, but mother praying for this. So, brothers and sisters, thank you so much for your dedication, your love. You know where to go. Buy the book and, and ship it on Amazon, amazon.com, the mother of peace. Make sure you go to the right one. And let us make True Mother's Book an Amazon bestseller so that the world pays attention to what God is doing today. With that, I say thank you, Arju, and I pass it back to Kay. Thank you, Reverend Dunkley. You know, there was a good quote on the chat that from Don Marsalik, he said, happy True Mother's Book on Amazon Day. So we've just got lots and lots to celebrate. And family, I do have to apologize. We mix up the order a little bit today because I was so excited about all that was to come in this time, celebrating many important moments, cutting the cake in particular. And, you know, we've got people from all over the world watching. I saw Susie Evans from Australia is watching with us today. And while it's amazing to connect internationally, we want to continue to support our local communities. So at this time, I want to invite you to make your local tithe 
If you need help, you can type hashtag tithe into the, the comments section, or you can go to nationalfamilyservice.org and find all the information you need to make your local tithe. And while you're doing that, I hope that you can enjoy this beautiful offertory song. For our offertory song today, let's head over to Chicago and welcome the Chicago Family Church Band and their performance of the song Symphony. Enjoy. Thank you. 
Thank you, Chicago Family Church Band. Really an amazing song. Do you want to apologize for the technical difficulties? I saw a pretty great comment that Yuki's rap was too fire. The system went down. I love it. So we got the opportunity to watch that song again, which is actually a perfect intro for our our message today, our main sermon. And at this time, I'd like to welcome the one and only Reverend Levi Doherty, the pastor of Atlanta Family Church. We're so excited to hear your message this morning. Uh, Uncle Levi, we'd like to welcome you to turn on your video and unmute yourself at this time and share your message with us this morning. Good morning. Love the blue blazer. We're excited to hear from you. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, thank you, everyone, for this opportunity to be here at this precious uh, moment of history. I feel like the message that we've already heard from uh, dear Bishop Kim and uh, Reverend Dunkley that I don't need to say much. I think they've already said uh, the necessary things that need to be said. Uh, I would just like to, for a few moments, just to share uh, some ideas and some thoughts I've been having uh, in, in this wake of the pandemic and uh, the George Floyd uh, situation. And th this is a moment in history that none of us really thought about or perceived. It just happened. But I've been reflecting on that concept of something just happening. It, in, in politics, nothing just happens. Everything is well planned and orchestrated. And it looks like to you, oh, this person design, resigned because of health or whatever. No, it, it, he, he was, it was necessary for whatever the reason and, and he was taken care of or she was taken care of. In God's kingdom, it's the same way. Uh, everything is planned However, we only have one plan. That's God's plan. That plan is plan A. There is no plan B with God. Only one plan. And so in that plan, circumstances uh, happen. Uh, working together. We, we can't forget that God has a back office. And in God's back office, while we're sleeping, the angels are working to prepare situations for our advantage. And as we understand what our advantage is, we need to know who we are. And otherwise we'll miss the point, we'll miss the calling, we'll miss the opportunity. Uh, I remember father said one time in, in, in the New Yorker grand ballroom, he said, the window of opportunity is always moving. It never stands still. And when it comes in front of you, you have to be ready to jump in. And if you hesitate and go to another nation, the nation called procrastination, you will miss the point. And then when you get ready to jump, there's nothing there but a brick wall. This is our opportunity right now. As children of the most high, both on the physical world and in the spiritual world world. And we are concerned, of course, our true mother's concerned. God is concerned. Everybody's concerned. And I want to let you know that even Satan is concerned. Otherwise, he would be resting and taking a vacation, but he doesn't. He's always ready to jump in every opportunity that Satan's get because his goal is to destroy the people of God so that we have no chance to move forward. The concept of the divine principle is not just words on paper. It's not just a concept. The divine principle is so 
essential that if we don't have divine principle, we wouldn't have the world that exists today. We wouldn't have the cosmos. We wouldn't even have God because God is the divine principle. It's not a lecture. It's not something we should study when we get time. It is something that we have to become within our own self. And in that, we, we, we come up with nice slogans and nice things, peace, love, and you know, all that's wonderful. But in the process of building God's kingdom, it starts with the smallest nucleus of the kingdom of heaven and of the cosmos, and that is the family. God has sent our true parents. God has sent our true parents to bring us life. And, you know, the, the slogan now is that Two things, Black Lives Matter and I Can't Breathe. Well, let me start with I Can't Breathe. We have to understand where the breath comes from. When God created Adam, the Bible said that God breathed the breath of life into Adam. And Adam became a living soul. So therefore, we need to understand the value of life itself is based on divine principle. It's based on give and take. For instance, many people will feel like despondent and so forth and so on, and they want to take their life for whatever the reason may be. And nobody just goes into the bedroom, sit on the bed and stop breathing. They have to get a gun or jump off a bridge or or stand in front of a train or car or something, or you know, jump in a lake and kill themselves that way. But the easiest way should be that I can just stop breathing. But you can't. Why? Because you didn't put the breath in you. God did. God breathed any, any child, every child that's born, the first breath they take is an inhale. And the last breath you take when you pass from this world to the next world is an exhale. So the inhaling and exhaling is actually the divine principle in action. Without inhaling and exhaling, we, can, we will die. So what are we supposed to breathe? What did God want us to breathe in this, in this, in this atmosphere? What did God breathe in, in Adam? What did he breathe? Was it just oxygen? No. It was God's divine love. In that divine love, Adam took his first breath. Then how can we say uh, that, that we can live without God? Or we can live without parents? Because they're the ones that is the founding factor of our life itself. I want to read something to you, just simply in the Bible for a minute. In Genesis, it's important, I think, that we understand this, how humble God is. In Genesis 1, verse 3, it says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and he called the darkness night. And there was evening and morning the first day. Sounds familiar? I'm sure many of us have read this scripture a thousand times or more. But I want to draw your attention on the three letter word, let. The three letter word, let, is a corporal word, is a word that, that needs cooperation and togetherness and service and understanding and agreement, agreements. And also, uh, we, it, it, it shows that I'm, I'm with you, I'm, I'm together. If I say to my wife, you know, let's go walk on the, on the riverside, or let's go to dinner. You say to your, uh, your friend, hey, let's go to a movie. The word let, it means that you want to partner with someone. 
So who was God partnering with? God was partnering with the electrons and protons to, to bring about the physical light that we see. In the absence of light, there is darkness. And we look at how that, that light is not just a symbolic of truth, but it's also a center of, of heavenly things, a desire to move ahead. And when we understand ourselves as who we are, that's the first, that's the first letter, that's the first point. We got to know who we are. We are chosen people. And I can tell you this. You may not understand it now, but you understand it by and by. Every single individual that joined the unification movement in whatever fashion, whatever age, you were chosen from birth to do so. Absolutely. Without question. Now it's up to us. We have freedom to either get involved and do our best or just to wait a while. And in waiting a while, many times you miss your, your calling, you miss your point. But the, the, the first idea of God was to bring God's kingdom on this earth. How? How is he going to do that? By using divine principle. So is it a lecture? Is it a thought? Is it an ideology? Is it a theology? No, it is a fundamental, intense matrix of God's works in reality. So when you see me, you see the divine principle in action. And who is in that action is God. And who is in, the, in, in that is love. So God's divine principle love is like, I like to put it in that ca category. It's nice to say true love, but every teenager who's in love, they tell you that I'm in true love. And you can't change their mind. But when you put the principle in it, there's a mechanism that allows you to understand what is right and what is wrong, what is left and what is right, how to go, how to go forward or how to stop for any moment. So it's incumbent to us to understand who we are. We are divine principal entities, come from a divine God. So therefore, our, our seeking in our life is to become more divine. So we need a divine principle. We need a, a guideline. We need a, a understanding. And then with that, we are taught through our parents. And we call it the school of love. The surroundings that we have now, looking at people are wondering what to do. Well, how can I go? What Should I go marching? Should I stand up for this? Is this wrong? What he did? He killed that man. And so, oh, yeah, oh, that's, oh, that's right. You're right. You're right. But we have to understand who we are. As Bishop Kim said earlier, we are leaders. Leaders of what? What are we leading? We're leading a march? Are we leading a, a speech? Are we leading a community? We are leading the actual fundamental metrics of what makes the kingdom of heaven established on this earth. So we have to stay focused. You got to stay focused. You got to stay focused. You can't be wishy-washy here and there. I don't know what to do. We, listen, we all are in this thing together. And let, let me say, we have ups and downs. There are 100%, uh, we're not 100% perfect in all that we do or say, as Reverend Dunkley said earlier. And there can be no perfection in ignorance. So the first thing we have to do is remove the ignorance. That's why we are taught divine principles so we can remove our ignorance. And let me just say this. We don't own the divine principle. It doesn't belong to us. It, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have it as ours and nobody else can get it. I'm the only one that can teach it. We are livers of the principle. We have to live it. So when you see me living the principle, you want some of that. You want to be like that. You want to inherit that. Well, then you can ask me the details and I can take you to a workshop, and that's fine. But may, mainly, I have to draw you to me. Why? Because the God in me is also working through me. I like to call the people that we call second generation. I like to call them first generation. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because they're the first generation that was born without sin. 
that the first generation was born with the original mind intact. They were the first ones who understood that they came from a true parent's seed of righteousness and 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 in principle. We we call ourselves the first generation. Well, quite frankly, we were just an egg and seed that produced the first generation of the righteous ones. So I want our young people to take heart and understand that we have to kick our conscience in, in place when we do something wrong. You already know what's right and wrong based on your original mind. And the conscience is somewhere there after something doesn't work for you. But we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. If it had not been for our true parents, no telling where we'd be or if we would be at all. You have a supreme advantage. You were not just chosen after you were born. You were chosen before you were born. God designed you from heaven is correctly. If we take up the ways of the world and act like everybody else act, who can they follow? Who can they come behind? I know a lot of us you want to be incognito when we go to college or school because we don't if we don't want harassment, if we don't want to be accused of being a moony or this or whatever we, we may call ourselves. And so we hide under, you know, wanting to be like everybody else and we want to get along. And that's okay. But you can see from what happened with George Floyd turning the world upside down with one act. What if we had one, what, one if, what if we had been that person under that knee? One of us. How about me, myself? Under the knee. And like, and like Stevens was calling out Asking God to forgive them as they were stoning Stevens, trying to kill him. He asked God to forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. That mere cry of I can't breathe is saying I can't love. I don't know how to love the man that's got his knee on me. And the man that's got his knee on me don't know how to love. Where did that come from? That didn't come from racism. That came from lack of Godism. The lack of love is it? Cain and Abel, kill, Cain killed Abel. Which one was white and which one was black? It wasn't about race. It was about the lack of love. If I don't feel love from you, then I will feel resentful. And, and that's just the way life is. How can we move forward in this activity? Listen, we've gone a long ways now. 43 years over, I've been marching this, this road, road. But there's something in this book, Mother, the Peace of Love, I want to share with you. And it's on page 76. And this is when Damon, mother's mother, goes to see father. And she sees him and she's so excited about finally meeting the one that she's been praying for and fasting for, even years eating raw food and losing all kind of weight, waiting for the Lord's signal to go and meet the Lord of glory. Then when she gets there, he pays her no attention. He doesn't even recognize her. And all of her affection is looked like it's just wasted. And then Father began to give a sermon. It talks about Jesus and the suffering and the ones who didn't understand the hour of their visitation. In that moment, she got a revelation and she began to weep and cry. And she went to the corners of the room and bowed down and wailed and cried. Because now she understood that her thoughts were centered on herself. And she was asking God for forgiveness. And then when all the room was clear. Damon and was still in the corner weeping and father attended her, embraced her. And he said to her, you have finally passed the test. You've gone through everything. 
and you've passed the test. And what is the test, brothers and sisters? On page 76, read it. What is the test? The test is, a, is, is that we have the heart of love. We don't lose our faith and our love. Satan never comes to you when you're flying high. He comes to you in the hour of your weakness. As, as, as President Dunkley said, in the hour, we, we all have it. He comes. Now, Jesus is fasting. 40 days and 40 nights, no bread, no water, fasting. At the end of his fast, Satan is waiting patiently, waiting. And finally, Jesus says, our Jew, amen. I'm done. Here comes Satan. I know you're hungry. I, I know you're hungry. I, I know, listen, this is the way it's done. Because he's wide open, he's spiritually open. But he held on to the principle. In that moment, he realized it's not about me, not about my hunger, it's about God. This hour is our hour, brothers and sisters. Hold on for just a minute. We've been traveling a long ways, and we're now we're here. We're here in America. Doesn't matter how you got here. And the, the, the so-called African-Americans or those who are called black or whatever you want to call them, paid a sincere and serious price that many times is ignored from slavery. The sweat, blood, and tears of the ancestors of the ground now, their bones are crying out. It now is our time. We paid the indemnity. Now, you know, I mean, uh, being a slave is not a big deal uh, because we had 40 years of 400 years of slavery in Egypt. Why? These are God's children. These were the children. Uncle Levi, I think you muted yourself there. Could you could you unmute yourself? I'm sorry. Uh, in that time, I want I wanted to go to something and say. Is, is God prejudiced? Is God a racist? Is Jesus a racist? I want to draw your attention to Matthew 15. Read it when you get a chance. This woman was running behind Jesus. And that's in, uh, that's in uh, 15, uh, 23 through 25. Running behind Jesus. Because her daughter was sick and demonized with all kinds of demons. And she was asking for some help with Jesus. And Jesus said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And some Bibles that say I was only I was sent only to the house of Israel. And then it goes on to say that you don't give God's children bread to uh, dogs. And then she says, My Lord. With her, on her knees, even the master's tables have crumbs. The crumbs can go to the dogs. She didn't say, I'm not a dog. Don't call me a dog. She just said, even the master's tables, the dog can receive the crumbs. And then Jesus said, because of your faith. And that hour, the Bible said, her daughter was healed. You see, it's not about what people call you. It's about who you are. You gotta know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you stop in your tracks and go a different direction. God has a certain people, a certain anointing on these people, a certain attitude that we have to have in knowing who we are. I think the first thing we have to do is change our language. Change our language from calling each other black and white. We're the only nation that call each other black and white. Everybody else call it each other by their country. You know, when you go to Africa, they don't call each other black. They call each other by their, by their uh, tribe or state. And we're the only country. Why? Because these two labels that have been put on us separates us. There is no black people. No black people. I'll say it again. There is no black people. There is no white people. 
My pigmentation is just a little bit more than somebody else's who less have less pigmentation. Because you have less pigmentation, does that make me greater than you? Or you less than me because you have less pigmentation? No, it's all, it's all it is. It's the color of a skin. We're all the same. But I can tell you, the more we call each other outside of righteousness and who they are, the more they withdraw and become evil and want to fight. Nobody wants to go to heaven and put on a long black robe. We want to put on a white robe. Nobody wants to be washed as black as coal. They want to be washed as white as snow. Even white people have what they call a black sheep in the family. So no matter what you say, black is not all that great in others, in the corners of our subconscious mind. And those who are called outside of their name and their character feel bad, no matter what you say. And then they act out. Now you can say, yeah, I'm black and I'm proud. That's all nice. That's all right. That's all nice. But then how come you're still in the situation you're in? I mean, you say, oh, white doesn't mean nothing. I'm just white. Then how come you feel superior? Because all through everybody's language, white is better. Black is bad. Let's first change the language and go to heavenly language. I like the, I like what Kelly called me, Uncle Levi. I'd rather be an uncle to Kelly than a, than a brother or a friend because I have obligations to her as her uncle. I'm, re I'm, 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 I'm responsible for her. And, and I rely on her asking me to help her. And I'm ready to charge into that. But when we change the life, oh, I'm Dr. Uh, Levi, uh, 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 you know. Oh, what is that? It's creating something we don't need in the family. You know, I, I did tell you this little story. When I was elected as vice president of this movement, I was so excited. And it was late at night when we finished the ceremony and everything. I get it. I was in Washington, D.C. I live in Norfolk, Virginia. I got in my car and I'm driving and I'm driving so fast, almost 90 miles an hour. I'm so excited. I'm going to can't wait to tell my wife, hey, guess what? They made me vice president. I'm the first black vice president. I'm so excited. I go in and get drive in the driveway, come in the back door of the house. My wife is washing dishes. It's about 12, 31 o'clock in the morning. She's washing dishes. All the children are in the bed. And I said, Hey, I come up behind her and I hug her, you know, kind of romantically. And she's still washing the dishes. She didn't move. And I said, guess what? She said, what? I said, I, I'm now vice president. She turned around, looked at me. She says, what does that mean? Can you take out the garbage, please? The trash is overflowing. And all of a sudden, I'm not vice president in my home. I'm father, I'm a dad, I'm responsible. And what's my first duty? Take out the garbage. We don't need to have titles in God's family. We just need to know what our responsibility is. That's where it all lands. And in that process, I remember I was feeling down, really heartbroken. Something had happened and I felt betrayed. And just all of a sudden, Bishop Kim, I was in, the, I was in uh, Washington, D.C. in Upshur House. And Bishop Kim came and uh, everybody was all excited and he went up to his office and he called for me to come up and, and I came up and he just asked me, how are you doing? And how are you feeling? And how is the Kingmaker doing? And so forth and so on. And we were having a small talk and otherwise the Japanese sisters came up with coffee and they began to serve coffee. And of course, they began to serve coffee to Bishop Kim. And Bishop Kim stopped and said, no, no, not me. Serve Reverend Doherty first. He's an elder here. That small act of respect and kindness changed my life. I realized that was God doing that for me. It wasn't for him. It was for me. When I brought that back to his attention, he said, I don't remember it. No, you don't need to remember it. It was a great 
principal act. It was a divine act. It was an act of God's love to me because I needed that at that moment. And sometimes we, we get into these, these modes and we can't figure out, but God knows and he comes to our res rescue. And I remember another time and everybody was getting all excited and everything and, and uh, uh, Bishop Stalins was getting matched and, and um, you know, you're just running around being a chauffeur, doing whatever you do. And then all of a sudden mother came and says, okay, uh, I wanna take uh, Bishop Stalins uh, to buy some wedding clothes. And I was sitting there and then as she came down, she said, Levi, you too, you come. And I said, well, oh, I guess I'm gonna carry the bags or something like that. But no, M mother was shopping and everything she bought Bishop Stalin, she bought me, everything. I'm not getting married, but she bought me a tuxedo, she bought me a cup, everything. And then she said, let's, let's go have a meal. And we went to have a meal and we sit down at the table and we brought the menu and uh, mother was looking at the menu and she says, ah, I can't decide what to eat. And then she looked at me, she said, Levi, what do you think I should get? And I said, mother, I'm eating orange chicken. She said, oh, that sounds good. And she ordered orange chicken. And when we finished eating, we all got up from the table. She looked at me, she said, thank you, Levi. That was delicious. Man, whew, if I had wings, I would have flew to the ends of the earth. Because I understood I mattered to God. And God recognized my efforts. The last example I'm going to give, when I had a, I don't know if you, anybody here ever had a bad central figure or bad boss, but I had one one time. And this one was really nutty. Back in the 70s, we, let, we, we used to let anybody come into church. We didn't care who they were, as long as there was one more number. And this person came in and obviously had been around, but he became in charge of something and he got upset with me and actually put his foot in my back and said, you need to get out because you are king. And I said, okay. So I just was calm and waited till the end of the night and early in the morning, about one o'clock or so, I got out of my sleeping bag with my bag and I crept downstairs, I was leaving. And just before I opened the door, this voice said, why don't you go upstairs and pray before you leave? And I said, well, okay, I went upstairs and I prayed. And as soon as I got on my knees to pray, a spirit came over me and I was lifted out of my body into a wheat field, a golden wheat field. And off from a distance was a house, beautiful white house with huge columns. And as I draw nigh to that house, there was a black woman, exaggerated black, rocking in a rocking chair. And there was music and I realized at the music when I saw it was a chain that was bolted to her ankle and she was a slave. And the ankle was bolted down to the porch. And she was rocking and singing. And as I turned and looked, she was had a breast out feeding this little white baby. And she had so much love. She was singing lullabies and she was using the slave owner's chain to make the noise to love the baby even more. And as I was looking at that, then I felt this arm on my shoulder. I looked to my right and there was Jesus standing there. And Jesus said to me, you see, she's free because she has love. Love is more powerful than slavery. Levi, until you can learn to love like that, you cannot be called my son. Well, I found myself back in my body I went downstairs and got my bags, came back up, slid in my sleeping bag. 
have been here ever since. Because we have moments in our life that doesn't quite fit the narrative of God's love coming to us. It doesn't mean that God's love is not in us already, but we have to then love the person who cannot love us. So we have to grow to maturity to do that, of course. And then we understand how important love is. Love is the most important. So what does a divine principle family look like? It looks like the kingdom of heaven. And so we have to understand the problem, and I'm closing on this, the problem is not racism. Don't get it twisted. Don't lose your focus. The problem is not that I need reparation because of my ancestor slave was slave. I am married to a woman who their ancestors had slaves. And we have found a way to love each other. Or oh, it wasn't easy, no question about it. But in the process, what is the real problem? The real problem is, you know, we can just say sin. Yeah, yeah, well, okay, what does, what does sin mean? We missed the mark. We didn't understand. And as much as we mark the page where Eve fell with Lucifer and Adam fell with Eve, and we keep saying that because of that sin it entered the world, yes, 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 and that's her legacy. That's their legacy. But if they had not have fallen, it would also have been their legacy that they're the first seed of the kingdom of heaven on earth. And we would not be going through this. Listen, this, this, is, a, this is a headache for God. Because God has to depend on us for restoration. Restoration is not God's problem. It's not God's responsibility. Restoration is our responsibility. And we pay indemnity. But the indemnity still have to be a part of the restoration process. So we restoration through indemnity, some level of sacrifice. That's all it is. But I've learned through reading uh, Mother's book more than anything else in the world is sacrifice. It's up to you to decide whether it's a sacrifice or not, or is it your devotion? We can change the narrative. Oh, it's my devotion. I, I, I just, listen, I, because I love God so much. I want to do God's will. So I will bow a thousand times. I will read. I will study. I will take cold showers. I will go and visit. I'll walk 10 miles. I'll do whatever I have to do. I'll get out of my comfort zone. Let me just say something about comfort zone. There is no comfort zone in restoration. None. Every day is a focus intense moment in a moment and second satan is never a thousand miles away from god satan is always right there beside him. one decision one way or the other can determine your rest of your life so what is the problem then levi the problem is the lack of love so divine principle is three things Absolute faith, absolute love, and absolute obedience. The love is in the middle because it holds everything together. My faith, as this book will share all through this, all through this book, it's about faith. It's about love. It's about obedience. That you can wrap this book up in that way and say that's what it's all about. Faith, love, and obedience. So we need to have the conversation. Let's have the conversation. As a family, let's get together and have a conversation on how we can heal the land and build God's kingdom. Through what? Our families. God bless you. Thank you for your time. We love you. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Uncle Levi. Such a powerful message. You know, so many of the phrases you use, I had to write down because they were full of such truth. My generation says it's a truth bomb because it hits you so, so deeply. You can't, you can't even question it. And you know, you're right. You are my uncle. I grew up with you and my dad being brothers. You know, I always felt that way that you are brothers. And so naturally you can be my uncle. And this point you're making about 
starting with love, that this is the solution and starting within our families is so important at this time. So thank you so much for your wisdom. Thank you for your passion, your truth bombs, your love bombs. Amazing. Thank you. God bless you. And Uncle Levi has prepared a reflection question for all of us. So let's just take a minute now to think on it. It's why did God create the divine principle? And for those of you who may not know, the divine principle is the core teachings of the unification is faith from Father and Mother Moon. And if you want to know more about it, all you have to do is type hashtag connect and we'd love to, to get to know you and teach you more about this amazing resource. So let's take a minute to reflect together. Thank you, brothers and sisters. And now let's have our closing prayer for today's service. Let's invite Reverend Kazuo Takami, District Pastor of Hawaii, for our closing prayer. Okay, let us pray. Dear most beloved heavenly parents and true parents, today is the day of all true things, and this is the one of the milestones that true parents have made to this world. We are so grateful to come together with the families of this nation and beyond, and we are one family centering on you. This year, so many Tensions have been rising one after another in various fields, not only COVID-19, but also social unrest, or even North and South Korean relations. Unprecedented challenges we are facing, yet we don't lose our hope because of our true parents. Let us keep ourselves as the salt of the earth who practice teachings of our true parents and let us be the light of the world who have been raised by our father and mother then let us become divine principle global family as reverend doty preached this morning today is also father's day so i sincerely hope that we can honor true father in the spirit world together with our mother on earth through our faith and words and deeds. Please empower all of us here so that we can glorify and lift you up, heavenly parents and true parents. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I offer this prayer with gratitude in the name of Kazuo Takami, Breast Central Family. Aju. Thank you, Reverend Takami. And for our closing song today, I'd like to welcome a powerhouse couple, Oji and Karen Behin, and their performance of the song, From This Valley. We want to dedicate this song especially to all the amazing fathers and father figures out there today. Happy Father's Day from us to you. Dreams of a river 
Thank you so much, Karen and OG. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for all the beautiful Father's Day photos. We received so many, up to like 85, 90 photos. Amazing that we can honor all of you today. Thank you for your patience with some of our technical challenges today. But I know you can feel it too. God is alive and God is working. And I'm really grateful to be able to start this week off with all of you. I want to invite you to support this important cause and this important ministry of National Family Service. You can type hashtag coffee or go to nationalfamilyservice.org and press the give a coffee button. We've got a hardworking team that really wants to bring God's love to you every week. So please support us. And thank you for those of you who already are. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Please celebrate with your families. Day of All True Things and Father's Day and Mother's Book being on Amazon. We love you and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Uh, oh, wow, you got you got a party over there, Damien. Father's Day. <laughs>
Sound.